Hello, and welcome to the reality show about exercises in Python. It's not a very exciting reality show, but I'm your host, uh, Charles Severance, and uh, these exercises come from Python for Informatics, Exploring Information. And, um, of course, this material is uh, Creative Commons Attribution, as well as the book and other materials. So by now, I hope that uh, you're getting pretty good at using Python. Um, hopefully, the Python Learn materials have been helpful to get things set up. So the exercise that we're working on today is exercise uh, 7.3 from the files chapter. And our goal is, is simply to read through a file and print out the contents of a file, all in an uppercase. Uh, executing the program will look like this screen. We obviously have to prompt for the file name because it says enter the file name and then we give it a file name. And we're going to get our file from this URL shown here, Python for Informatics slash code and box short docs txt. So let's do that. Um, and, um, and so let's let's go ahead and do this. So the, the first thing we're going to do is uh, go to the web. And here's Python for Informatics. By the time you're seeing this, maybe it'll be even prettier. And the URL is in this code samples. And this is old school user look and feel. And I'm going to open this. And this is the data that we're going to work with, the mailbox format data. And uh, I'm going to save this as a text file. And I'm going to put it in my desktop the folder Python for Informatics, I'm going to put this mailbox file right in the same place as all of my other files. I'm going to verify that that's looking really good now by opening up a terminal window. I'm going to go into that folder. My that folder right there is in my desktop. Python. And there we are. I've got my file. Okay, so I'll open up Text Wrangler. Make them a little smaller. Okay, actually, I could open this file in Text Wrangler if I wanted to. Open Inbox Short, and so there it is. If I want to like look at it really closely, uh, where we go? But I don't want that. I want to make a new Python program, and so we will. Um, you know, well, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to enter a file name. So let's do that. I'll call my variable fname equals raw input. Enter a file name. Colon, throw a space. Oops, switch back to single quotes. You can use double quotes or single quotes, but single quotes are cool. Double quotes make it look like you're a Java programmer that can't remember whether it's single quotes or double quotes. Python doesn't care about it, but the cool people use single quotes. So use cool. I mean, if you want to be cool, I'm trying to be cool. You can see I sometimes don't get it all. I'm not that cool. OK, so then I want to print file name. And uh, let's save this. And then as soon as we save it, you'll see that um, um, Python for Informatics. Uh, we're going to call it program shout. .py, and as soon as we get it, we get a nice co syntax coloring, which helps us understand if we've made a like typographical error like that or something like that. So, so we'll save it. And if I come here, I now see shout.python, shout.py. I say python shout.py. Enter file name, Fred. Looks good. Okay, I didn't do much else. So. The thing we've got to do, of course, to, to uh, read a file is we can't just read it. We're going to have to make a, get a file handle, right? So we'll call our file handle fhand variable equals open. And then fname is the file. And then, of course, we can write a for loop for line in. A line is just a variable name. For an inner keywords, but line is just a variable name and f hand. And that's because the file handle file handle is a type of sequence that we can iterate through in a for loop and this loop will run for each successive um, line in the file. And so I will just say print line to kind of know that 
Now my loop is actually iterating through the file. So we got four lines. And we'll say Fred again. And son of a gun if the open kind of blows up because there is no Fred. So we have to run a program here that's actually in the directory. Uh, mbox short. I have a short and log one so that the mbox short is just so that you don't, it's a little easier. Small. It's just the pr first few lines of the full mbox file. Okay, so here we go. And uh, so there we are. There we are. Well, I'm going to have to make that a little bit bigger. So if we go up here and we look at this, one of the things that we see is it doesn't look like the file because there is a blank line after every line. And you say, oh, crap, why is that? Well, you're just going to have to get used to the idiom that is trimming the lines. And so I'm going to, I'm going to trim. I'm only going to trim on the right side, line.rtrim. I'm going to trim the white space on the end. And the problem is, is there's a new line here. And that print statement is also adding a new line. So I'm just going to trim it. Save that. It's a little smaller so we can kind of see it going at the same time. I use Command K on my Macintosh to clear the screen. You can actually use CLS and Windows if you want. And so I'm going to run the same program again. Mbox txt, uh, short txt. And now we should. Oh, 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 it's not our trim. Let's see. Object, stir object has no attributes R trim because it's R trim in some other language, and I'm forgetting because I'm switching between languages. But I just, there's a no method, and you'll notice that the syntax coloring is not right either. And it's R strip. How many people caught that? Not many, probably. I didn't even catch it. Let's try it again. Mbox short txt. Okay, so now it's still kind of ugly and nasty, but you can kind of see there's, when we print the file out here, there's no extra blank lines, and that's because the new lines have been stripped off. We're still getting a new line from the print statement, but we only want one new line. Okay, so we're getting pretty sh pretty close. We've got, um, in this bit of the loop right here, we've got the line. We've taken off the white space. So now it's a pretty simple task to just say line equals line dot upper. And then we're going to convert the whole thing to uppercase and run it again. Mbox short txt. There we go. It is shouting, shouting, shouting because everything is an uppercase. So that's pretty straightforward. Not too much error checking. Let me show you one um, one sort of Python idiom that allows you to contract this. So in a sense, this is a function call. It says, give me back a new string, which is a copy of line with the white space removed. Well, this is a string, and we can apply a string library method to it as well. So I can actually tack on the end of this the upper. And I can take this line out. And now I can do it in all one line. And this goes says, take line, strip the white space, and then take the resulting white space free and convert it to uppercase. And that should accomplish the same thing. Let's make sure we don't have blank lines. We don't have blank lines, so everything is fine. Okay? So we could add a few things. Let's add something to this. We got their specifications done. We're kind of done at the minimum. But let me show you something cool here. Let's just say you got tired of typing that file name all the time. Here's a little trick. If the length of f name is less than one, I'll just say equal zero. We are going to set the f name f name equals inbox short txt. 
that basically means if we enter our real file name, the length of the file name will be greater than zero. If we don't, we're just going to assume we're going to change that variable to fname, and then when we open it, we'll have it. So watch this. Oh, better save that. So I could type a file name, but if I hit enter, it just does that. Look how convenient that is. So in effect, we're creating a default, as it were. When the user types enter, um, they sort of do their thing. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much it for the uh, exercise 7.3, the uh, shouting exercise.